wrestlers are not so situation. Now, if Ocelot World can punish that, that could work out really, really well for them. So expect to see them prioritize strong duelist junglers to invade and at least make pain suffer if they do pick that. And as we do see the rest of the bands coming in, Ziggs, Yasuo, Thresh taken away by Ocelot's team. And Ocelot's team, Ocelot's world. And Pain Gaming taken away, Kassadin, Elise, and Gragas. And honestly, I'm surprised at the Kassadin band because Ocelot's made it known many times that he doesn't enjoy playing Kassadin. True, but at the moment, you would kind of have to be mad not to play Kassadin if he was available or pick him if not. Because he's just so strong under the circumstances, even when teams have thought up specifically this Kha'Zix against him with a jungler that Vi gank him, punish him for everything and even existing, goes 0-4 in lane and then he carries the game because Kassadin at the moment is kind of broken. As a result, everyone just doesn't want to deal with it. Punish him even for existing. That's a, that's a little hard. We are going to see A picked up for Ocelot's World in the hands of Diyu, who's going to be playing that one. And we have then it picking up Olaf and Sir T picking up Jinx here. So. We have seen Olaf played a couple of times throughout the entire tournament. I'm trying to remember if they played. Yeah, they did actually in game number two versus Isra's Gaming, and that was in the top lane. It didn't, if, if I remember correctly, Venom didn't do amazing, but he held on strong in his lane. And with that, because of the help later on, he was able to really trail through. I don't remember exactly what the score was he ended up with, but I remember it wasn't anything to me at least spectacular. No, but that's the thing about Olaf. He doesn't necessarily need to do particularly well. He just needs to be enough of a threat just to the Squishy. He has R. to run away from him. Yeah, essentially, as long as he is tanky enough to not die instantly, he is going to get on a Squishy if he's able to get really, really fed. And he'll just kill you even, you know, completely regardless. But hmm. a character like Kale works very, very well against Olaf. Yeah, actually, I really like that pickup, as well as the Ezreal behind that. Heydal is actually a very damn good Ezreal player. He's been playing for the longest time. I think it's one of his uh, favorite, if I'm not mistaken. But having an Ezreal who can get away from Olaf very quickly, having a Kale ultimate, if need be, to keep him alive, that's a very safe AD carry. And then even if you have Annie to back that up with, it's going to be very hard to take them down. And I am not liking what I just saw. A Sona pickup here. Sona not so You're commonly so seen. So squishy and up against Annie specifically. That's a really, really risky pick. But it does give you AoE lockdown, which you can't really get anywhere else other than Annie, who isn't available right now. And her early laning presence can be huge. If That's they lock the it first time I've ever heard the crowd cheer for a foreign team hovering over Mordekaiser. I doubt they're going to pick either of those two champions. They may arguably be trying to bait like pain into picking a Moomoo. That is a viable option for them. And indeed, Lee Sin, he will invade the jungle, essentially, if a Moomoo does get picked by pain. He wants to be able to shut him down and shut him down hard. However, pain don't have to play into their hands. They can pick whatever they want right now that's available. And a lot of options. Thing is, I was not impressed by Morden's Lee Sin. I was in, in, in the games that we saw earlier on where his customer was saying. It just really wasn't too aggressive. He didn't really counter jungle too much like we saw Aronea doing, but he was there to make the plays. I guess that's what counts in the end, but it was still very, very tricky uh, throughout. And I want to say that's not going to be Tristan. <laughs> I want to say it's not going to be an AD carry, but they're just searching through everything they possibly have. Remember, they need to pick potentially a jungler or a top laner here, and it looks like they want to go with Trundle. Trundle against Renekton is an interesting choice because Trundle is actually, he's very, very good against the, the strongest current top laners. He's very, very good against Shivana because he steals her resistance. He's very, very good against Mundo for the precise same reason, except he also has percent health damage. Renekton, his function of kind of sustaining his way through using his Q, he's a little bit less good against that, but he can still outscale him. He can still push Renekton back over time. It just takes a bit longer and he might, if he dies, start to fall behind. Is he going to jungle it? I would guess not if he's going to sit on that ghost. I, I would want to assume that would be an Olaf in the jungle. And the thing is, to what me, I'm thinking about is, who's delivering the ball? Who's the one setting up the entire fight with the Oriana ultimate? And right now, you have the yeah, Olaf who can't be interrupted. Anything, it's like Trundle putting a pillar behind the team and then running it in there. It just kind of seems really not fluid or not really like a great way to, to, to get the ball in there to get the Oriana ultimate to pull them all together. Well, you can't get like a super like shockwave set up like instantly with this kind of, kind of uh, composition, but you can run it in there. You can send the shockwave in via uh, attaching it to Olaf and using the dissonance to speed him up while he's ulting. 
Plus, if Sona can get off a crescendo, there's a several kind of potential avenues for that AoE initiate. And Oriana Shockwave makes a very good follow-up. Yes, it does. And right now you're seeing pain on your screen. 2-0 to Isris yesterday. They knew they are coming into, well, two very good teams here. It's just depending on what they wanted or who ended up winning. Furious and also that world where also that world obviously came out ahead right there. And they had the chance to look at them uh, you know, to see how they're playing. I actually saw them. I uh, sit on the couch all day long, watching the games, you know, talking to each other, trying to figure out what we can do against this team. And the thing is, both these teams haven't had a lot of time prepared for them, but Payne has the advantage from seeing them play earlier on today. Yeah, and Payne are also a team that will have a lot more research on Ocelot World in general. It's harder to find, essentially, VODs for, for, for Brazilian teams if you're in Europe. But the vice versa is not necessarily true because I believe Payne will have at least several players in the beach and can find their content. <laughs> Across that world, we have Trunda, Olaf, Oriana, Jinx, and Sona for Payne Gaming. Do you think we're going to see any level one action here? Because we didn't see much, but we have seen more today than we've seen in the entire tournament. Well, Payne have, they're pretty much the only Brazilian team that actually has gone for level ones relatively consistently. They don't have a particularly strong level one fight, though, more than likely. Anyone's going to be invading. It's going to be Ocelot World. They've got the A. We stun on Annie, and they've got a lot more early damage between uh, Ezreal. So, Payne probably going to fan out, try and defend Ocelot World. Whether they choose to invade or not, I couldn't really say. At the moment, it doesn't look like they're going to be going for that. We do have. JWL spawning out then and there on towards the top side. And I just want to say this, guys, for you who are just joining us or who are, uh, just joined us today and didn't watch yesterday, I'm actually controlling the camera. I hardly ever do that. I usually have Joe Miller to be the one to do that, so I'm kind of a lot that great at it, but hopefully I won't miss out on too many kills here. But as you can see, Minerva just doing a little dance, and they're holding their lines across the river. No invades coming out just yet here, but do have Kami down towards this bottom side. It looks like we're going to have standard lanes come in here across the board. Yeah, the late invade that Ocelot World pulled earlier, maybe not such a good option against Olaf because it's harder to predict where he's going to start. They're going to want to try and get down some early warding cover just to make sure Olaf can't, you know, is, is restricted to farming. But the flip side of that is that Morden will have free reign to gank early on and Olaf is going to be committing a lot of time in just farming. All right, now do you able to spot out Kami there by that ward? And we even see Surti using one as well here in this bush. Remember, we actually saw yesterday we were casting some games. We saw Pink Ward put down in this bush, and it wasn't spotted throughout the entire game. And it paid its its worth in, in, in an insane an insane way. But right now, Venom going to be starting. Well, starts at Surti. He'll be starting at his red buff. In the meantime, Morgan will be starting at his blue buff. So both going to start on the same side of the map here. And we have a lot of wards out by Pain Gaming. Just you know, one on the top side, one on the bottom side. I love to commit this early on. Yeah, and if you have this level of um, jungler coming in towards the bottom lane both at the same time, Lee Sin's gonna come out on top, and indeed Ezreal is better. In the next situation, you get the minions out of the way fairly quickly because someone is gonna be running away. That makes Ezreal infinite. If he can land his Q, he has probably the highest level one of any AD carry. Right now, you're seeing them just kind of push them out. Look at that double Ooh. stun coming in. They're going straight for BRTT. They do pop the Ignite on top. He's very low on health. He does have the barrier, but no, he doesn't actually pop in time. He gets taken down, and now Hayden will be forced to run away. But first one went over to him, and they get that very early advantage within two minutes and 40 seconds. Yeah, that's a, that's a bad start there for Jinx. And it was just because they did not respect the level one damage from Ezreal. If he can land his Qs, he does too much to deal with. As a result, neither jungler is going to go down there right now, and that does mean both of them are going to farm up. And that also does mean Morton doesn't really have a lot to be doing right now. He could try and jungle invade, but it's difficult to duel an Olaf anyway. So Lee Sin, the early ganking jungler, is going to be spending an awful lot of time just farming his jungle. I'm not sure he's not going to complain too much about that in the end, just to get that level 6 a little earlier on and really be a nuisance when we get into these ganks. But I mean, if you think about this, Haydal and Dude both have their flash available. BRTT has zero summoners, and Minerva was forced to use Ignite in that fight. So I would expect to actually see Ocelot World's team be very aggressive bottom lane and keep that pressure on because they've already gotten that first kill. If Haydal's level 2 to level 1 of BRTT, like, they have a huge advantage. Yeah, it's a very nice place to gank in principle. It's the right now, the jungle. 
path isn't quite correct for the top lane at the moment. Sneaking in, I think, via the lane brush. He's been looking for Venom here. He does have that rip available. Venom does have flash to escape here. And we see JWoww putting a ward down in that top bush just to see if Sir T is coming in. But both Wingers are here. Both double buffs available. This could be very dangerous. Saw in the game just prior. What can happen if you lose your double buffs early on, especially to a Renekton? And Morden, he wants to make his, his move in here. And actually, we see Sir T is backing out. If they actually wait, oh, is he, if he was going to commit to that, could have been very bad for Venom. And they're just committing so much time. Here's engagement. Ward's about to queue this land. Will Morning go into it because he's so he doesn't indeed go for it. And he's able to just run away right here. But a lot of damage being done, a lot of summoners being committed as well. Even Surti using his ghost right there to stay alive. JWoww is the one that comes out best out of that exchange. And Morden may look for the dive. I doubt it though, Olaf. A little bit too healthy, a little bit too tanky, but Morden now gets to basically steal away some buffs, and JWoww gets to shove up and back three. Pain arguably could have, couldn't have done much better in that situation because obviously Trunks couldn't just ignore the minions, and they weren't absolutely certain that the jungler gang was going to happen, but in the end, they have been uh, the ones that lost that fight, essentially. All right, now we're seeing Pain actually sit healthier than their opponents. Uh, also, well, which just from that total sustain that unfortunately Annie really doesn't give you, but first potential obviously a lot higher out of, uh, out of the blue team right now. Morden to do a little bit more counter jungle, took away that big Wraith. He's quickly level four, so T is as well since he got a lot of minions in that top lane uh, when the lane got shoved into him. But so far, JWoww able to get a nice CS lead to his opponent, 32 to 24. He's able to invest into a Dorn's Blade and a Lost Heart. And we're seeing also that goes straight after Tommy right now doing some really good damage to Morden. the top side, Q is going to go in for the flash, and they get the kill. These junglers have a complete read on each other. Yeah, and Lee Sin is the one that picks up the kill versus Olaf. So scaling-wise, mid lane balance is not really going to be changed too much. Ocelot will get a little bit of an experience advantage, but Sir T now doesn't need to worry nearly so much about the jungle invade from Lee Sin. He has got ahead in the same way that he was after that initial top game. Fantastic play out of both these teams, very even across the board. Both of them showing that they want to get to those those finals to play up against Millennium so you can win that $15,000. And right now, also, they're the ones in the lead. You see the Chow's picked up for Kami. We do see also actually backing away to go buy up right now. Morden is down towards the bottom side. Minerva overextending just a little bit here, trying to get some harassed done. And Morden not able to get in, but they do get the stun. They do actually run straight into him. He does flash, the Q does land. Surti is there, leaving him just around the hate. I do get the kill, but that's still alive. Dude, he is stuck all by himself. Stop him here. So dude's trying to get his stun out, trying to get his extra armor in. But in the end, you trade a support for an AD carry, and Pain is going to be very happy with that. Yeah, very, very nice counter gank. Surti also getting his gold up now. He can go back, pick up on, well, his full Ancient Golem if he wants it, but actually choosing instead to go for the boot does help him with his gank, does help him with his escape. I really do like his presence on the map thus far, though. He's actually been there, I think, every single time Morden's tried to make anything happen. Yeah, every time. He has a perfect read on him right now, and it's really hard to do against Elise Sin, who can be so damn sneaky. And right now the kills did go over to him, which is a little bit unfortunate, but both junglers picking up two kills apiece. We do have one over to Haydog, just because of that level one slash two exchange that we did see earlier on. Surti gonna be going for his red buff here. In the meantime, Morden gonna be donating his blue over to Ocelot. Also, it does have that single already done. There is a slightly alarming fact for Pain right now, though, in that Ocelot is farming and building up a little bit of an advantage over Orianna. But crucially here, he's playing Kale, and we know how dangerous Kale can be with even a moderate gold advantage. She just suddenly does a billion damage, and everyone on your team, bruises or no, end up being shredded. That's something you can't really afford to let continue, but Surti is going to have a very difficult time. And Dude, that flash Timber is never getting very long up. He's going to go down to Knight. Dude able to pick that one up. Now, BRTT getting very long help. Surti is going to have to come help him out here. They could potentially go for the dive here when Dude has that stun available. You see him already heading that way on the mini map. We have Kami returning back to me late with his own blue buff. Surti has joined bottom lane for the party, but this bottom lane of Onslaught World has been doing a fantastic job. No kills coming in on the side of Pain there. And that gives him a nice, strong lead. We saw Onslaught World's uh, bottom lane 
doing very well uh, in their games earlier on today. And they're still keeping up right now. Slot World bot lane is actually, I believe, a sub. I'm not 100% certain on this, but Hadel, I don't think, is there. Uh, don't quote me on it, but if that is the case, they are certainly working together really, really well. Because Hadel is a remarkably skilled AD carry, but he historically has had some issues with synergizing with Patek. Samix used to be their AD carry, but I think he went to a, a, a reformed Jax team like Naruto Door on it. I, I'm not 100% sure, so you can't quote me on that either, but like I said, either way, they're playing phenomenally well together, doing a fantastic job, and they're really trying to uh, overwork this bottom lane and insist advantage. And you can see Morden, he is not spotted coming on his bottom side. He is level 7. He can kick one of them back. Whenever he's not level 6, this can become very dangerous. Whenever it's actually very, very close to level 6 right now, if they push the wave a little bit more, they might be able to pull this one off. And they do see that Warner. I'm surprised he's actually running straight in for it. Kind of... I, I don't know, I just didn't let the support maybe pick that one up before he went in, but they do spot each other. They do back away. And that allows Warden now to visit this middle lane since he was not spotted himself. Yeah, this could be an easy kickback if he can get over the wall with a ward. It's just a little bit too deep for his tastes. And he's going to go back down to bottom lane right now, or is he? He's kind of dithering, not really sure what to go for. It looks like he's going to opt in the end to just roam with his mid lane, maybe steal away Wolves. Maybe he's expecting Surti to actually be here. He's looking like he's going to go back to bot lane, though. Yeah, and you saw how he actually roamed around with them, maybe expecting Surti to be there. Since they did see him bottom lane, you're, uh, you're definitely right. And right now, Surti's heading down towards that bottom side of the jungle. So he'll have all those Wolves to be able to pick up here. But bottom lane of Osa World, they're still being aggressive. They're still pushing up. They have any stun. Tibbers is available right now. Ignite is not up, though. And Minerva has finally hit level 6, so we could start to see the aggression turn in favor of Pain here. Level 6, when you have Sona and Jinx, is incredible. You have an amazing amount of burst. The flip side, of course, Hadel and, you know, Hadel, Ezreal, and the Annie dude has a lot of burst, but it's not going to be quite as high. So either jungler appearing could completely turn that lane around. But right now, they're just taking advantage of the fact they saw Hadel go back, and Vsin's also back. So they're actually going to just not. They're, they're going to turn and switch straight for Deodorant. Then he does get the Tibbers on them, but it's just not enough at the moment. He does get caught by uh, the Chompers. It looks like he's going to be going down here as he, in fact, does fall to the end of the BRTT. They gave the kill over to him. He stopped them from doing Dragon, which gave more time to get here. And if they could possibly steal this away, if they still commit for it, this could be huge. This could have been perfect play by, uh, by Dio, but instead, Pain back away, realizing they have that advantage off that one kill, especially given that over to the carry. Yeah, it's not late enough in the game that you can ignore Dragon's damage at the moment. Therefore, Pain even though they might end up, you know, getting the dragon, don't want to risk being caught in a situation where Kale can poke them down, where Ezreal can poke them down while they're trying to get the dragon done. As a result, not taking the risk. Kill and just walking. So, kind of resetting into a, a phase of, of just farming once again, but Right now, I actually have to favor Pain. I feel like they're going to have the stronger mid game. Right now, we do have very strong Jinx. Already built to that, towards that BF sword. Triforce two thirds of the way done for Vado. Top end, there's a huge CS discrepancy, about 30 CS between JWoww and Venon. And that's not what you want to see between this uh, this Trundle and this Renekton. Trundle and Renekton, generally, I, I did point it out at the start, Renekton is one of the better tanks to try and deal with that lane. But Trundle will outscale him eventually, just a matter of time. But JWoww is remarkably good at winning matchups he's not supposed to do. In fact, earlier on, he was playing versus Shyvana, gave up first blood, and then just won the lane anyway. And JWoww is going to have a tough time getting away from this one. He does have flash escape. He's going to look for the wall. He actually does have the flash, but so does Bennett. He gets over the wall. He's getting the slow. Will he have the ability to come up back in time to stop him? He's going to go for the dive. It looks like JWoww so low on health. He does stay alive. He does force him uh, to stop committing for this. And a fantastic flash out of both JWoww and Venom right there. Venom was trying, was really thinking about going for the dive there, but JWoww was actually baiting it. He wanted to use the Q to get that little spike of health, stun him under the tower, and turn it around. As it happens, Venom ends up kind of wasting his flash in the end. And JWoww is resourceless. He's running out of mana here. Morden is heading towards the top side as well to help out JWoww here. Venom 
She's going to back away. Surti going to be going for his red buff here in the meantime. And that means the blue buff it will be available for Ocelot. In the meantime, the bottom lane, we do see the crescendo come out. It actually hits Hada, but Dio is just all by himself in the front, getting a lot of damage on the BRTT. So a lot of ultimates used right there, but no kills coming in either way. But with the sustain out of Minerva, he should be able to keep up BRTT healthy here. Yeah, there's no life steal item on Israel either. He needs to go back as soon as possible, which means that the pain bot lane really wants to push out hard right now. But they're a little bit lower on health. They have to be so careful of the Annie stun engage. Dude, he has an ultimate available. He could drop that Tibbers right on their head. He doesn't have Ignite, though. And I'm not sure if Hado will have the sustain or the damage behind him to finish them off. But the Crescendo is down. That's what's really key. With that being gone, there goes their pretty much entirety of their disengage here. Yeah, they, they went for the engage before and tried to get the burst down, but unfortunately the Jinx rocket actually missed, so they were kind of a little bit out of luck on that front, and that's why they're now down one ult. We're going to see Kami pick up his blue buff here. He's going to help out quite a bit in lane. Also, already has his. He's been farming quite a bit, 146 CS compared to 143, so both mid laners have been keeping up with each other. The only real discrepancy still is yet in that top lane in Cert Team. He actually might catch out Dude around this corner. He's walking straight into him. Does see the ward go down? He's not going to commit for this. So he doesn't know who else is there, unfortunately. And the rest of Pain looks like we're going to see Minerva back away. Buy him some items, sit on 700 gold. He's going to finish that side stone, have that little bit of extra help, that little bit of extra leeway so he doesn't get bursted down. But Lord and, and Dude are both going for this dragon here, and no one's in the vicinity to even stop this from Pain. That's a really cool little play. They know where the vision control is because their own ward hasn't spotted any big plays. And here's the dive. j -Well going straight into Venom. They have that kill ultimate there. Venom is well, certainly going to die here as the rest of the team does get that dragon. j -Well actually jumping out while he had the ultimate on top of a little bit of a miscommunication, but they pick up the kill either way. Asa locks that one down. Now Surti is actually chasing that more. He doesn't have that much away, but now Dio getting very lucky. Taken down by Tommy right there. A little bit out of position and a one well, a one for one trade in the end, but with Ocelot's team getting that dragon. Yeah, Ocelot well picks up, uh, doesn't pick up the dragon. They don't even pick up the top tower though. They're using a lot of a farm. The pain are just going straight for the jugular. It's gonna take down the tower. I think before Ocelot can get there, it all comes across, but I don't see that changing anything. So we will have top turret eventually go down in the hands of JWoww. Pain able to take the middle turret down too. So a turret trade apiece, one to one in turrets, 23.3 thousand gold for Ocelot World, and 22.5 thousand for Pain. And Kami and, and also have been farming so damn well between these two. They've been taking so many jungle camps as much as possible. And we are seeing the bottom lane of Pain actually take down that bottom turret as well. So they take the turret lead. They actually closest to a 100 gold difference here. Actually, basically, it's exactly even. And also, he might get ganked right here. Mostly in the Ocelot is at a head or equal in gold in spite of the fact that they are uh, behind on objectives, is in JWoww. Look at the farm difference between himself and Trundle. That is a big, big disparity. And that's the kind of thing JWoww does to other players. He just destroys them. But that does mean, so long as Renekton isn't allowed to roam, Pain actually has a lot more of a strong 4 on 4 fight. And a Pain coming down on a mortar. There's nowhere to spot him there, but... They know he's going to be in the vicinity. They expect him to be there. As you see, the rest of Ocelot's world pushing down onto the turret. They're trying to kill every single minion here. We said Pain actually going for the engage. They're going to go for a warder. They're just a spot where they are. And whenever can he land this crescendo? He doesn't have flash available. He actually, unfortunately, doesn't hit it because Warden does flash out of it. But will he turn this fight around? They have everyone there. They don't have the crescendo up. So this will give Ocelot's world the opportunity to turn this. And he gets the Ragnarok pumped out of Sir T. That is unfortunate for him. In the meantime, though, you're seeing Pain push down middle. They're shoving down as Ocelot did go down. And they're going for a turret. Yeah, even though Pain kind of messed up that crescendo and the follow-up, it doesn't really matter because Pain are the ones still taking the advantages. JWoww will obviously increase his farm difference, and they're having to retreat because he might be able to collapse on them, but that doesn't really matter. They are the ones winning out in the end. The crescendo for the flash trade, even though it needn't have been a trade, is fully in their advantage. And this game is dead even across the board. The only difference is that one extra turret that we have for Pain currently, and JWoww, he's just farming as much as possible. 61 CS lead, 17, 18 minutes in right now. And he wasn't even trying to do tur damage to that top turret. He was just shoving the lane in, forcing him to miss on quite a bit. I mean, we can see the turret's health. It's still very, very healthy currently. Right now, also, the world, they seem to be stuck on what to do next. They want to go for some objectives here. They still want to pull off some of these ganks, but they're being thwarted every single time. 
Yeah, they're trying right now for the bottom tower. That's the most obvious option because obviously top tower is already gone. Mid tower defended by Oriana. Good wave there and really, really dangerous because of the amount of farm she's got. That does mean that it's quite predictable, and that's why you can see Surti hanging around in the bottom jungle. He knows the only two places they could possibly go for an objective force, and he can be able, and he can be in position to react quickly. You're seeing Jay just shred through every single one of those minions. That is insane how fast he picks those up. And right now you see you have that Nash just two plus those guys done, so he has a lot of penetration if you mix that in with the sword boots. And you have that steady tank out of the top laners. The AD carry is a Triforce compared to a Bloodthirster. But the CS is just so split between them that you really don't know who has the advantage. It just depends on who gets that engage off. JWoww is actually building now to snowball that top lane even further. You can see he's built a tier map. So once he's got the Hydra, he's already stronger than Venom. He'll be able to push him away from the minions and keep himself really, really sustained, which allows him to split push continually. But that does mean he's going to be squishy in these team fights if he ever gets down to one, because Kami is doing so much damage, he will shred him. And look at all these wards invested by Pain. You see one there, actually two or three there. You see a couple here towards Blue Bell trying to protect a uh, pink ward in as well. I mean, they are trying to control the vision everywhere along the map inside their own jungle because they realize they're being invaded upon. And you look at all star worlds, they just have a couple here or there. I mean, there's a couple towards the top side, which is mostly put down from JWoww, who's been pushing up constantly. And right now we're hitting a slow point in the game, about 20 minutes in. Dragon be up in about a minute. And I'm assuming that's where we're going to see the action really break down. Yeah, what Ocelot World needs to be doing here is using how strong JWoww is to create map pressure. That's what he's doing right now. He's going top, but because of their lacking vision control, they're having a lot of problems actually getting him safely in position to do that. So I actually feel right now, using this kind of 50 seconds left until Dragon comes up, Morden would be very, very well served by heading up into the upper jungle and creating a situation for JWoww where he can actually um, push that top lane relentlessly and then roam down for the Dragon in time. As it is now, probably a bit too late for that. Trundle's going to be able to push out top and then roam down to join up with his team. And it's going to be a straight 5 on 5, which is where the tier map build might become a problem. You actually see JWoww did have the, the, uh, the mouse to pick up that Negatron cloak, though. Yeah, he's going to build up that extra magic. So this is going to start heading up towards this dragon. Also, going to push up middle. They have the exact time run since they got it last time. 20 seconds remaining. You see the damage that Morden just took right there from Kami, who is farming excellently this entire game. And that early penetration build is really working out well for him here. As Morden has far. So he's basically done to him every single time. Kami pushed him. We might see that again just second as Dragon has now spawned in here. So World doesn't see that ward right there, unfortunately, but the bottom lane of Pain is actually down towards, uh, well, ADK support down towards the bottom side of the map. They're really kind of out of position right here, but both teams really hesitant to make that initial move towards Dragon. It's very, very risky because both of the teams have flash initiate AoE CCs that can be chained together. It actually looks like Pain are going to try for this, but they have to be very careful. Morning, he might look for this steal. Already got one earlier on today. Can he make it happen this time? No, he actually doesn't get it. He does get kicked back. He's on the ground instantly. Crescendo lands across to you. He's very low on life. Fair TT, the ultimate comes out, but it's not going to be anything but two kills and the dragon come in almost instantly for Pain. They're going to start pushing that middle. They might be able to turn off this. Are pushing them back hard now. That fight was because of what we got pulled out of position. I was right and getting engaged off of that track fight, so it was really, really smart by them. They are able to take another tower, they are gonna just back off now and get free items and vision control in this upper jungle. And when they come back into the lanes now. They are going to have the vision, they are going to have the items. It'll be their time to start sieging, for instance, the upper tower. And Kami, he was already hurting, but he has another 25, 2600 gold to spend, and that is going to make him extremely dangerous. And Tank Gaming, I want to say they came in as the underdogs, but I think overall this is a very even match between them. They are showing up right when it counts, and they are making the plays work for them. 22 and a half minutes in, they finally have that gold lead. And right now, also, well, they just, like you said, got caught off guard there. They really can't afford to do that too many more times. And remember, Pain, they have a gold advantage in spite of the fact that JWoww has proven himself once again to be one of Europe's top, top laners. 
but he is only he's only bringing their team up to 3,000 below in spite of having a personal kind of goal generation difference that must be heading up to two or three kills worth. Oh, Kami, he is out of position. He's being forced to flash away. So it's also flashing to get the slow. They do, in fact, get it right there. But he's able to escape, and that's all that really matters right now. But Nerva doesn't have Kishona available. Ocelot does have that Lich Bane finish, so they could push down this turret fairly quickly. If they don't do it quickly, Minerva will have that crescendo up, and that will turn this fight completely around. And Jaywell, he has almost the money for that Hydra. Yeah. Still trying to farm it up here. And I don't think the thing is, like in that last fight, it wasn't even engaged. It was like, a, oh crap, Borden got caught, he died, and then Dio got caught, he died, and we just had to run away. We didn't even get to fight them. Yeah, Jaywell in that last fight really was the factor, which is part of the reason Pain came out on top of it. The fact of the matter is, though, that and when he builds up this kind of advantage, that is going to be very important to their playstyle. Adal pushing up very aggressively. Right here, they see BRTT at the bottom of the map in bot lane, trying to push out that wave yet again. So they might want to go for that push on this turret, but BRTT is already on his way back. Just have that Bloodthirster and that Zeal now completed. And the crescendo is now available for Minerva. This could be very dangerous for both these teams, but looks like Ocelot World's gonna go straight in for it. The ball is in position. There's the ultimate. He catches Ocelot. He gets crescendo. He gets the ultimate off onto him in just in time to stay alive. He's gonna go down though to Venom. And they're chasing that towards the back of the J-Well. Looking for the kill to Minerva. He finally does get it, but BRCT has him out of position. They pick up that kill. Hado hey, Morden can't back him up. It's a two for two trade. And Hado hey, not very low. And the kick coming out of Morden knocks Venom away. Keeps him off of this chase. But Venom's not done just yet. He still has a pillar built that he can't put down. He can't potentially catch him off guard. He does get Hado, but he gets Arcane Shift and Venom actually flashing in. But it doesn't matter. The Arcane Shift is enough to save Hado right there. And with all that fight breaking out, it was still only a two for two. And that's because there was so much focus put down by Pain on Ocelot. He tried to burst him incredibly hard. Actually ended up wasting a lot of cooldowns on his ultimate. He was invulnerable, but at the same time, they still came out ahead because JWoww went for an aggressive kind of counter-engage dive. That situation, though, it really didn't work out. They ended up very straggled out in the tower power. A lot of damage in the fight. Pain ended up chasing them down. But because of the amount of wasted cooldowns, they weren't able to capitalize on it completely. BRTT here in right by a pink ward right there. He's gonna actually start backing away. Dodges the Q out of Morden. Just stops Ow. moving, not even scared of him. And he will be able to run away, but the rest of Ocelot's world will be able to gain control of this red buff. Hato will be able to pick that one up here. Meantime, Sir T is pushing this top side. JWoww finally joined the party here. Doesn't have that Ravidus Hydra done just yet. So he was forced to go into that Spectral's Cow and a little bit more health. And the thing was, like you said, he, he kind of overextended in that fight. He got a little bit too deep. It got completely split off the rest of his team because of that turret still being up. And if you look at the turret's health, it's still about a third life. And a little bit, I, I want to know if that was just Ossus World being a little bit too cocky going for the fight, or they realized that once that Orion Ultima is down and Ossus survived that initial burst, that they could go for it. I feel like they may have felt that way because they knew how many cooldowns had been used by Pain there. But they ignored the fact that while they were diving, they couldn't safely give BRTT. And that meant he was free to put out a huge amount of damage across the fight, which in turn allowed him to then uh, just chase down with his getting side and passive. So uh, I can understand making the decision, but I don't agree with it. I think they should have tried at least to disengage, but that would have meant a guaranteed at least loss of one person. Pain, look at the items that they've been able to complete. They are getting dangerously close to being able to win these team fights flat, flat out. I mean, Kami, if he lands a perfect Orion ultimate with that death cap, with that Athenes and Holy Grail, the Haunted Guys, and the Sword Boots, he is going to shred through the entirety of Ocelot's world. Even though JWO has a magic just built up, even though Morden has a Negatron Cloak, it's just not going to be enough to survive against that burst. And I think it's Kami is level 16. He has rank 3 ultimate. And that gives him even a greater advantage. Yeah, there's a big, big amount of damage available to them, but they have some trouble putting it down in the right places. As you mentioned in Champions Leg, they don't have a ball carrier, so they have to kind of rely on either of what will Oh, they go straight for Kami. He gets burst to town before he can do anything. And now Sir T with their Emerald Pop trying to chase him away. We see j going straight in, but never getting dropped very low. j gets on other turn. He goes down. That's a one for one so far. Now Dio needs to go down because Venom has arrived to the party. He's looking for a couple more kills. He doesn't have that build to cut this, but he has the slow. He has 
enough to chase them down more than actually and being forced to run away and Minerva is able to survive. But hey now, he's sticking around onto the side. This could be very dangerous if he gets caught here. He does go straight to the back line for Mirror TT. He does get the kill, but it was caught. Bennett is chasing him down as Moore was the one to shut him down. Hino and Onslaught staying alive with the hills to get the double kill. They get four kills in that trade, only losing two men. And the longevity of their team, once that Wombo combo was down for pain, was enough. And Kami didn't even get his ultimate the whole time. Ocelot World won that fight was because Pain chased them a little too far and split themselves up. BLTT still has his barrier. If he had been able to survive that little bit of extra damage, Ocelot World could never have turned that around. And their hesitation was a very close run thing. Ocelot World, though, do put themselves back up a gold advantage if they can get this dragon. This is very dangerous. Kami still has an ultimate available. Will he be able to pull it off in the right spot? We just got some flash trading for Kami. There's the ultimate. Hey, now goes down. The crescendo, well placed for Kami. Still dies at the end, but also now they're chasing Minerva down. They have the soul. They're going to have the stuff. But Minerva's going to fall here. And that is a double kill with Dragon off the back, too. If or, they want it. Or not. Yes, there we go. They just wanted to ward it. Makes sense. They are going to be able to pick that up. That will be a gold advantage. I don't think Surti should do this. And he doesn't get the sight till off Dio getting very low. He's gonna be dropped right away, and they're still committed to this fight. It is a bloodbath. Pain was the fight over and over. J Will getting caught by the choppers. He's gonna go down. He sacrifices himself. And you see Pain pick up two kills, a double kill going over to BRTT. I stand corrected. That was actually really, really smart. Ocelot was running low on mana, had no ultimate. He couldn't afford to go close because he couldn't burst down Sir T. And as a result, he did almost no damage in that fight. In BRTT, he was free to just hit whoever he wanted as much as he wanted. And these two teams, they just want to fight. They don't really care about the rest of the game. They just want to go head to head every single time. And it's been so back and forth between these two teams that 29 and a half minutes in, basically all tied up in gold, all tied up in turrets almost all tied up in kills as well, and as this game progresses on, there's got to be a breaking point of pain. You have to think that they're going to be stronger in that late game. Yeah, they have some really strong late game characters. I will say Ocelot World will never be out of this, even if we get to full build completely. But you have to give a slight edge to pain having Jinx as their cleanup. Orianna as a huge team fight CC machine with a lot of burst damage to boot is really good. But comparing that to Kale's ability to shred a bruiser, it's it's an advantage probably to Pain, but could easily be turned around. All right, now Pain going to invade here. BRTT not really positioned to help out. Neither is Hada, who's down towards the bottom side of the map. Both AD carries working up towards the middle side, and we do see also we're realizing. They're gonna take our blue. Why not just shove middle? We might be able to get a turn off this, get him in a bad position because they already have those two turrets down. We might be able to get an inhibitor down as well. Is Dio gonna ward off the backside just kind of giving that vision? He's gonna get the ward down, but does let them know that they are coming and they have pain in a really interesting position that if they split up, this could be very dangerous. Looks like also World's just gonna back away and not really bother going for this fight. And just take only the fights they really want to make happen for them, the ones that are only really confident in winning. It was a very interesting dance there, but nothing actually coming of it in the end. Pain, they reacted fairly calmly to the fact they had been split off from their base because they knew Ocelot World were not going to seek out and engage, you know, on equal turn. Having pushed towards that kind of inhib tower area, Ocelot World just said, well, I, actually, we're just going to back out and let you get round back towards defending your base. And that's, that's reasonable, understandable, smart, I guess. But it does mean Pain get even closer towards that late game situation. Right now we are running into a little bit of a stale point here between both these teams. There are 31 and a half minutes in, and it's at that point in the game though where if you lose a major team fight and it's very one-sided, you could have just lost the game. And you can tell both teams are really worried about that. Are really scared of dropping that first map in this best of three. Both of them want to advance on to play against Millennium in the Grand Finals, which will be actually right after this best of three. It will be a best of five as well, so that makes it a little bit more interesting across the board for both of them. And if you're if you're paying, you have all of Brazil on your side. You're fighting for your country. If you're also at World, you're fighting for everything. I mean, if you think about it, considering they didn't get the Coke League, they're looking like a team that you know would actually stay, or stay together or wouldn't really be able to take on some of the best teams and. They're fighting just for their, their image and also fighting for 
possibly I, I, I want to say they're, they're kind of careers. I mean, also, it's fighting for his brand, but I mean, kind of the careers, but they still have to show that they're still valuable and that team still need to watch out for them. You could argue, if you were in Ocelot's team, that you kind of got cheesed out of the um, out of the Coakley. They were not ready for a Trungle Pillar Yasuo combination. So if that had if that situation had arisen, they maybe wouldn't have been pushed out. But fair play to the team that knocked them out. That was a smart combo. They used it well. And Ocelot, well, well, it's it's. Says it in the name. Is it Ocelot that's the problem? If you're looking at the score lines right now, you wouldn't say so. But he's not showing himself to be making any huge plays in this game. I can kind of see that, and I can also kind of see the other side of that as well, where his position has been really interesting. Where sometimes he, you know, where, think about the fight earlier on when he was in the middle, he got pulled in, he got fully chained up, he got to open up, and because of that, they were able to stay alive and turn around the fight. There's very hit or miss plays, but I think Ocelot in general has really improved over these past couple weeks. He used to be kind of the lane to always gank if you're on his team or the other team because you'll be able to pick those off most likely. But he's been really stepping up. His Gragas earlier today was fantastic. And right now, looks like the calls are really working in favor too because they're catching Pain completely off guard. They're going for a push to this top turn. There's nothing Pain can do about this. This is going to fall before they can even get there. But we do have Minerva. He's going off the side looking for potentially a kill right there. Or, sorry, Crescendo. But... Instead of going for that, they back away, and now Ocelot's world gets a nice gold advantage. Yeah, that's just a free tower for nothing, and that highlights the need for Pain to keep control of their own jungle. But the thing is, at the moment, Pain are a little bit leery of looking for any kind of engage, or even face oh, checking no. any brush. This could be very dangerous, they're not spotted coming from the backside. D user lead the charge, he has lots of available. Who's to hit on? He gets oh. Mirage in the back. They die. The push and the Oriana ultimate! It is perfect! Come in on Pain, and they are taking this fight one by one! That is also going down, that is J1, a double kill! A tri almost a triple kill card for BRTT! And just like that, also the world had the engage they wanted, but they didn't expect that crescendo and that Oriana ultimate combo. They did not expect the Mikhail's Crucible. It saved BRTT, it cleansed him out of the stun. He was then able to flash out, and that meant Ocelot World had just died thrown everything they had to burst him down and had nothing to follow up on the rest of the team and BRTT was still putting out all his damage. And Payne, they're going to get the first and they have their officers. Are they going to go for the push? Are they going to go for the win? They're sticking around long enough. They have 20 seconds on Ocelot. They have 10 seconds on JYZ. They're looking for it here. They're going for the first next turn. They do get that down. Hey, I'll try to do everything possibly can to save this one as they're trying to turn around. The next turn goes down. They're going for the Nexus and they're going to pick up that number one over Ocelot's world. You can hear the crowd's excitement from that game, an insanely well played match by Pain. And we talked about one misstep, one mistake late game at 30 minutes plus can ruin the game. You can drop out, and they come out huge. That crescendo Oriana ultimate combo was fantastic, probably the highlight of the day so far. And they pull off a first map victory. Got like just such a good. I cannot get over that Mikhail's Crucible. Like that may not have been the flashiest part of that team fight, but that if that wasn't a planned bait, that was reflexes that are just unbelievable to get BRTT out of dodge. I really have to admire that. And I actually, I want the producer to tell me, can we actually show the replay of that when it comes back to us? Is that possible? Because I think we need to see that fight one more time because of how it developed. Okay, so let me know in just a second if that is a possibility as I get the replay uh, ready in case we go for it. But just so damn well played by both those teams. Also, this world, they had the control in the beginning. They, they kind of fought back and forth. They were bashing heads the entire time. But Payne, with that one play at the end, was enough to carry it out. It was it was a situation where both of the teams were farming up uh, like monsters. You can actually see still so 350 CS on Oriana and 327 on Kale. That's to the minute levels of farming, and that means a lot of farming. But that does also mean you haven't got that kind of um, that map control thing going on. There wasn't that much tussling back and forth unless they managed to get a dragon fight. But even then, it was never a big swing either direction. In the end, getting that one huge fight at the end was what mattered. Yeah, Tim, can we actually put that on the screen and kind of walk through it one more time? Because I want to show everyone at home just how 
insane that really was. Maybe we'll get it on screen, maybe not, but you obviously child. There we go. Nice. Right. Thank you, Tim. So let's go ahead and take a look through this really quickly, really slowly, because you see Osset's world. They're coming in from the top side. They have the perfect engage. They are not spotted whatsoever. Heydal lets them know they're there. But look at Diu leading the charge in. He gets the stun on a BRTT. They get the crescendo perfectly well placed. Mikhail's crucible comes in right there, and he's able to just completely flash away, just like you said. And with that ultimate, look at that. Every single man minus Heydal completely blown up across the board. And they just fall one by one by one. And because of that, Mikhail's like you're saying, BRTT just got out of range. He wasn't bursted down, and it didn't matter what happened in the end. They were able to overpower them completely. They were able to lock that one down, and pain. That, that was just so well done, so well played. And to have it come down to just that, the first best three kickoff. Incredible.